Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now, here's today's video. Before we get into our video, I want to tell, of course, our usual pun, which some of you really appreciate. You know, I used to date a girl who lived on a houseboat. Eventually, we drifted apart. <laughs> As I say, I love puns. In the video I recently published called All Things Are Working Together for Good in Your Life, I said that even when life seems to be working against us, it's actually working for us that out of difficult circumstances, good can arise. I believe this is so because there's a benevolent force working behind the scenes that can come to our aid even when we're down and out. Now, people uh, refer to this power by many names, God, spirit, higher power. And when we are in pain and feel overwhelmed and that we cannot go on, this power can send us a helper, an angel, a circumstance that miraculously intervenes on our behalf. I call this phenomenon divine intervention, a term that many of you may be familiar with. Now, I've had a number of instances of divine intervention in my life. One of the most memorable ones occurred in January of 2016. Wow, that was six years ago. Anyway, I was severely depressed in the ninth month of a depressive episode. And one day my, my wife, Joan, said, okay, look, this is enough. You're not getting any better. You got to go to the hospital. So I went there and uh, there was an admitting psychiatrist, a very kind man named Omar, O-M-A-R, Reda, R-E-D-A. And uh, he started to interview me. And about 10 minutes into the interview, he said, stop, you are really depressed. I think the only thing that can help you is ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Have you ever heard of the term? I said, yes, I have. I said, I did a video on it for a YouTube channel. And more importantly, I was evaluated for ECT two months ago at the Oregon Health Sciences University, OHSU, by a doctor named Christina Trevino. And she thought I really needed this therapy. Dr. Reda paused and said, well, that's very interesting. You see, I'm a close colleague of hers. And since we both think you should do ECT, I think I can make it work out here in the hospital. So what do you think of the idea that you stay at St. Vincent for 30 days uh, while we transferred you back and forth to OHSU and you can do the treatments right here in the hospital? So I think that's the best way to pursue it. Suddenly I realized that this was a case of divine intervention. You see that ECT treatments are given three times a week but you have to be at the hospital at 6.30. Then whoever drives you has to stay with you and drive you home. I realized that nobody I knew could work with that schedule. And yet here I was in the hospital where the hospital would take care of all my transportation needs. In addition, when I came back in the um, early afternoon, I would have group therapy uh, to be in and to participate in instead of being in my house by myself ruminating on my despair, which would, would have happened if I had done it on an outpatient basis. Now, what are the odds that an admitting psychiatrist at a hospital would be close friends with a doctor who had evaluated me for ECT a few months ago? As a result of this divine intervention, I was able to get the treatments I needed, which gave me my life back. In my mind, this was pretty close to being a miracle. A second example of divine intervention occurred in the life of a well-known psychologist named Kay Redfield Jameson, who wrote a brilliant memoir called An Unquiet Mind. In the book, she uh, chronicles her journey through bipolar disorder, which she calls manic depressive illness, which I think is a much better description of what people actually go through. Anyway, in manic depression, uh, these high periods of euphoria and ecstasy, ecstasy are then followed by a descent into hopelessness and despair. After a while, this can be very tiring and discouraging. So one day she said, I've had enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swallow a bottle of lithium, which was the mood stabilizer that was used to treat manic depression at the time. So later that day, she lies down in bed, swallows the medication, closes her eyes and is ready to die. But just a few minutes later, the phone rang, and just by reflex, she picked it up. 
It was her brother calling, checking in on her. When she answered the phone, she was going, you know, really, really slurred speech. He immediately knew that something was wrong. So he called uh, 911. They got to her place, brought her to the hospital, uh, pumped out her stomach, and they saved her life. As a result, she went on to write An Unquiet Mind and other books that have helped so many, I don't know, so many millions of people, I think, because it was a huge bestseller. An example of divine intervention at work. Once again, I asked the question, what are the odds that Kay's brother would call her at the very moment she was about to lose consciousness? I don't think this was a coincidence. Uh, Dr. Jameson was not uh, ready to die because she had not completed her life's work. Uh, and so I think that a power greater than herself was looking after her to make sure she would do so. Now that I've shared with you two examples of divine intervention, you might want to think back on your life and see if they've occurred. And then ask the question, well, is there a way that we can call upon this power and ask for its help when we need it? And I believe the answer is yes. We can call upon this power and ask that it intervene in our life. And once we do so, we do need to do is what they say in AA, turn it over and wait in faith and trust that eventually we will get the help that we ask for. Sometimes this help does not come immediately. This is where we need to learn to live one day at a time, getting through the day hour by hour, minute by minute, and sometimes breath by breath. But if we can persevere in our quest for healing and reach out for support, I know from my experience and the experience of others that one day we will emerge from the darkness into the light. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, Simply click on the Patreon image, you'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.